Speaking of Nordic skiing, um, there is the American Berkebiner, which is America's biggest Nordic ski race. We're not elite skiers. We are gonna do the uh, Fat Bike Berkey, which is about two weeks from now. We're gonna rip around on fat bikes here at Craft Ferry today. So that is roughly, right. that's roughly this section. $10 a day for 105K of trails, groomed to within an inch of their life. I mean, like, it's uh, it's a best deal in skiing, for sure. It's world class. Like, you had the US National Championships here a month ago? Yeah, uh, yeah, five weeks ago, US Nationals. And uh, last year we had six Olympians at Pyeongchang. And, you know, they've commented that, like, our Tuesday night race courses are groomed as well as some World Cup venues. You know, it's kind of ridiculous, uh, in, a, in the best possible way. If it's single digits or below, then Tolmers come out. Today's single digits. Okay. I think it's six degrees out right now. And my outfit consists of a power wool long sleeve base layer. I have tights on that uh, almost have a little bit of a, a base to them, Velocio Zero tight, so they block the wind. Um, I'll wear these when it's below 30 degrees. And then this is the Zero jacket, so it actually has this like fur lining that um, creates a barrier where it actually traps the heat in. So this, I save this for probably like under 28 degrees. It's very warm, um, so you have to be careful not to overheat. But yeah, that's all you really need, two layers. Right. I think that's beaver fur. Buck, the captain of the adventure, his mother sews all sorts of really cool wool mitts for workers who are, who are literally working up above the Arctic Circle. And so there's a bunch of stray beaver fur at Buck's house for this exact purpose. Put it on the nose, protect the frostbite nose. No one's none the wiser. Because right now, man, I go outside and it's still, my nose is so sensitive having lost a little bit of skin. Pretty stoked on these. These. Hogue dogs. Saved my life. to a fairly well. Um, fat biking is crazy because so much depends on your tire pressure, how wide your tires are. Uh, I'm running studded 4.6 inch Dillingers by the good folks at 45 North. Laura's running some Maxxis tires. No studs, four inches wide over there. And it's crazy, you know, you take pound of pressure in or out and it's completely changed the way you're riding. So far so great. Dude, grilled cheese for four dollars? Where can you get that? <laughs> so that's. Oh man. Looks like heaven. Super tasty lunch. Uh, the pulled pork, magnificent. We're wrapping up here at Craftsbury. We're gonna go just down the road to Hill Farmstead, which you may or may not have caught wind of. It just won number one brewery in the world for like the un umpteenth time. It's hilarious, we're gonna be on totally back roads to get there, it's in the middle of nowhere, and it is literally the number one brewery in the world. Ted's lead with the race 
choices he ends up choosing that are really important to sponsor. So a lot of times I'm like, just I'm happy to be along for the ride, and we both like the same sort of events. So I will be racing Rasputitsa in April, while Ted is actually in Missouri racing the Epic 150. So I'm excited to go back to that, and then. Uh, Vermont Overland is always a highlight. And then what I'm really excited for is that we are, we as in Ted and I are planning um, our own Vermont event, which will be on August 3rd. It's going to be called Rooted Vermont, and you should look for more details forthcoming. We're really excited. Hill Farmstead is special for two reasons. One, they produce world-class beer. If I were to blind taste test this beer, I would say, mm, that's Hill Farmstead and it's exquisite. Two, they are the perennial winner of the best brewery in the world, which I know sounds kind of foolish of a title to take home, but beer aficionados worldwide continually to vote Hill Farmstead the number one brewery in the world. The place is magic. Fitness going into the coast ride was honestly anybody's guess. You know, we're coming from our first winter here in Vermont. We're not logging those big five plus hour rides. So, you know, it's it's like we've we've been relying on the Nordic skiing. We've been relying on uh, alpine touring, some skinning up mountains, going outside, riding the fat bike as best we can. I was pretty certain that would feel terrible. I did not think it was going to go well with, you know, maximal, I mean, I think I went on maybe two, four hour rides in the last couple months to prepare and that was it. And you're riding four days of five to six plus hour hours. And the advantage of the coast ride is you have the benefit of a peloton. Because you're starting 300 riders a day, if you need to fall back and fall into a group and, you know, get the benefit of a group, that option is there. We like to push the pace to the front. Um, I, say, I find that to be a challenge though because if you really want to stay with the peloton and not get dropped, then you're riding full throttle. Suffice it to say, there's a very large mix of talents and fitness levels and abilities on the coast ride. That's really what makes it really cool. There's this sort of democratization of, of bike riding that takes place out there. So, fast forward to reality and we get out there and I think we both really surprise we surprised ourselves with how how well the ride went from a fitness standpoint. Um, not having logged those five plus hour rides and having to do that for four straight days is easy peasy. Your temperatures are plummeting. It is upwards of below negative 40 degrees, so well, it's critical to get fire going quick. The idea of the James Bay descent segues back to Buck. Buck is already born in Northern Ontario. He was a professional bike racer, raced um, the domestic road circuit for a good long while, race for uh, Symmetrics and Spider Tech, uh, Steve Bowers teams, and then as soon as he retired, he went back north. So he ended up in the town of Moosonee. He would often get flown into Attawapiska, so he would be flown into the start town, work up there. He lived in Moosonee for five years, again, the halfway point, and he's born in Smooth Rock Falls. So in his mind, the wheels are turning. Can we connect Attawapiska to Moosonee to Smooth Rock Falls? 